Morning Edition, the High Commissioner Greenslade updates on deaths in Italy. The minister speaks to the budget for the health ministry. And we take another ride on the road to Fashion Week. Happy Tuesday, I'm LaDawn Davis and welcome to the Morning Edition. Our gym leader Swain is standing by with the Bahamas First Traffic Report. The Traffic Report is sponsored by Bahamas First. First in insurance, today, tomorrow. Don and good morning Bahamas. We're coming to you live from Wolf Road just opposite the intersection at Blue Hill Road. It's been a busy morning so far for much of the morning but for those of you are, who are preparing to leave the house and want to get an idea of how traffic is going we now turn to Sergeant Jerome Thompson of the Police Traffic Division. Good morning Sergeant Thompson. Good morning to you. Good morning Bahamas. Obviously persons want to know if there are any areas of concern as they prepare to make their morning commute. Are there any areas that they need to be mindful of? Yes, um, the area in the area of Blue, um, so Milo Butler Highway, the northbound lane, um, they're still doing some road works in that area. So we advise places that who have to travel along that corridor to try to get out there uh, much earlier so they can make their commute. Now, obviously, this was, of course, a holiday weekend. We had two holidays. Thankfully, we didn't get any reports of any fatalities or very serious accidents. But I know that law enforcement officers were out and about on the streets during various operations. Do so you think that that helped um, in decreasing uh, the serious accidents that we have seen in the past? Yes, I, I believe there's a di di direct relationship to uh, enforcement as it relates to traffic crashes. Um, we had about 268 persons that we reported for various offenses, most of them being at speeding. So that's, that's still an area of concern, but like I say, no serious um, crashes? No, no serious crashes. Um, you know, in the Commission of Policy 2019 and Priority Number 2, uh, which speaks to public and road safety, uh, where the Commissioner wants us to enforce uh, the rules and regulations of the road, and he is saying it fit to increase our numbers in the Traffic Division. So you should see much more motorcyclists, much more road checks um, in order to um, combat and decrease the number of traffic accidents we have on our streets. Well, thank you so much. That is, of course, Sergeant Jerome Thompson of the Police Traffic Division. Remember, as you head out to buckle up, no texting and driving, and have a wonderful Tuesday. Back to you in Studio LaDawn story this morning investigations continue into the circumstances surrounding the deaths of two Bahamians in Italy and High Commissioner to London and former Commissioner of Police Ellison Greenslade is on the ground in Turin making further inquiries. The bodies of 29 year old Al Ray Ramsey and 28 year old Blair John were pulled from the Po River last week leaving loved ones with more questions than answers and the tough task of identifying their relatives. We got this update from the High Commissioner, His Excellency, Ellison Greenslade. Extremely good progress has been made in this case. This is an ongoing and sensitive investigation, and we must all be very careful in the way information is disseminated. I am satisfied here on the ground that the investigation into the deaths of these two promising young Bahamian men is receiving the fullest attention of the Italian government and the law enforcement officials. And Colin and Christopher Wright were able to view the body of their nephew, Alre Ramsey, and they were able to make a positive identification. On the 5th of June, 2019, Miss Brittany John was able to view the body of her brother, Blair John, and she was able to make a positive identification. I can confirm that the autopsies commenced on both bodies and uh, as of recent reports received from officials, the external autopsies have been completed. I have not received the preliminary findings of the autopsies as of this report to you, but I anticipate receiving it very soon. 
Police overnight were called to the scene of yet another shooting incident, this one taking place at 700 Wines, located at John F. Kennedy Drive. One male is confirmed dead following that incident. Now around 9 p.m. on Sunday, police were called to the scene of a homicide in the Nassau Village area. A male was also confirmed dead. Police are investigating both incidents. The Minister of Health, Dr. The Honorable Dwayne Sands, is expected to give a full report on the status of health care in this country during his presentation of the budget communication this Thursday at 10 a.m. While a bit tight-lipped on the allocation amount, the health minister told ZNS News that the allocation in the budget for health care will be a lot more than the previous budget period. We are right now in the process of reprioritizing our capital and our capital allocation is going to have to go not only to buildings, bricks and mortar, but to equipment. Uh, there are, there's machinery that needs to be replaced, ultrasound machines, x-ray machines, um, operating room equipment, and so on and so forth. Um, software for um, patient registration and electronic medical records. Uh, we believe that there should be a focus on um, tele medicine in order to uh, expand the reach of scarce resources, particularly scarce physician resources. The Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana continuing its work a month into the extension granted by the government. The body is set to hold another round of consultations in the family islands in the coming weeks. The commission is charged with examining the use of marijuana and furnished cabinet with a report on its findings. Commission co-chair Bishop Simeon Hall says generally that the responses of the public to the consultation have garnered mixed reviews. People are receptive, but we, we haven't mixed. Most people we've spoken to are for medical marijuana. Medical marijuana seem to be out front in terms of people uh, acceptance. But now, you know, it, it's not the commission's position to say that. Uh, until we are finished with our work. But I can say off the top that medical marijuana seem to be out front in terms of general. Everywhere we've gone, people are saying uh, we hear anecdotal uh, positions on how this herb has helped them. And let's take a break here, but when we return, let's continue our journey on the road to Fashion Week. So stay close. It gives you a lot of update on what's going on. I'd like to know what happened overnight. Welcome back to the Morning Edition. Fashion designer Jillian Curry Williams is continuing to assemble in her mind what she will take to New York Fashion Week in the coming months. She is closer to narrowing down fabrics and definitely well into the sketches. Jimmy Swain reports. I wrote down what I wanted from each piece as far as the fabric of hope and the lace fabric. Um, so it's just a matter of bringing to life what's in my head. I have the mannequin to work from because all of my models are size eight. So I will cut out some pieces out of the muslin fabric and try and see if it's my vision first before I cut my before I cut my fabric. It's now June and designer Jillian Curry Williams of Romelda Rose Design is busy organizing a thought sent to designs for New York Fashion Week this September. The vibrant color of Hope fabric is what she really wants to stand out. I recently caught up with her hard at work in her studio. Well, the fabric of Hope this year is going to be beaded, all of the pieces. So I have until June, the end of June, to have the pieces made up and sent off and then they're gonna beat it and send it back to me. So this was just showing how it's going to look once it's completed. And it's beautiful, I love it. So you did this as your test or you had it beaded? I, with your I had them do it. I just showed them photos of beadwork that I like the pattern. Curry Williams is not alone in the process and she has a few trusted friends to help her map out 
which lace she will employ in her designs. Some of my lace, I'm gonna probably, I think, have this bead work done. This is a belt I had beaded. I found a company that does this. So some of them will have this at the waist and probably at the neckline, I don't know, but I know definitely I want it at the waist. And then we'll just take it from there, but right now it's just the process of elimination, like what do you want to take out because you only have 10. Now most of the work will be done on mannequins as she will fit to the model's bodies closer to the summer. And we all know that fabric is not cheap, so Curry Williams explains the process to ensure that the fabric is maximized and not cut before her design is fully realized. I cut the sheeting into the style that I want, and then I fit it, take in any adjustments or anything on it, and then I put it back on the mannequin or the person and fit it again to make sure it's fine or make sure it's the style that we want. And then I cut fabric because you can't, <laughs> You may not like the style once you do it, so this eliminates that process. While Julian is focused and has an idea of how designs will take shape, we will tell you in the next report about some of the women who have worn Ramel de Rose designs and shares this journey with her. Jiminy De Swain, ZNS Network News. Meanwhile, efforts are underway to expand and develop the untapped cascarilla bark industry on the island of Acklands. The bark that is extracted from the cascarilla tree has fueled that economy for many years and contributed to the economic well-being of Acklands Islanders for quite some time. Desmond Saunders reports. I'm coming to you from Hard Hill, Acklands. I'm Desmond Saunders. Cat Island is known for rake and scrape. Inagua is known for its wonderful flamingos and salt. Acklands is known for its cascarilla bark. And today, in the back of me, this is a facility of Leonard Cawley, who harvests and produce and process the cascarilla bark. Good afternoon. Tell me about what you do. Well, we, 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 we cut it and we put it in the water to soak and often and soak, we beat it and dry it and then we ship it to the agent to, uh, to buy it from us. How long have you been doing this for now? I was doing this over 36 years. Has it been economically beneficial for oh, you? Oh yes, all the time, yes sir. I sure make good little fun from it and I, and I wish it could grow bigger and bigger still that we all will be able to make something to help us in this island. I have joining me is the chairperson of the Acklands Cascarilla Committee, Ms. Anita Cawley. Mrs. Cawley, what has been done to expand the Cascarilla bark industry, a thriving industry? It's been for centuries. Uh, what has been done locally to assist Bahamians in, in benefiting from this lucrative industry? Well, we have a plan on the drawing board right now, and this is being led by the Ministry of Agriculture and the Bahamas Development Bank to, um, to create a sustainable industry with the cascarilla bark, growing it, um, farming it, harvesting it, and using the byproducts like the essential oils, the skin, the quail, the sticks, so that the in industry itself will expand and the people on the island will benefit more from the cascarilla bark. Thank you very much. And I'm reporting to you from Acklands, the site for the first ever Acklands Cascarilla Heritage Festival. And the whole purpose and aim of the festival is to expose Bahamian to the lucrative, enormous benefits of the Cascarilla Bark, a lucrative multi-million dollar industry that Bahamians can benefit from. Now, Fisher, you've been having some fun over there in Long <laughs> well, Island. Well, Lord, I, was, I wasn't ready to come back and bring us. A lot of people were asking, few they were asking, when is LaDawn coming to Long Island? <laughs> if it wasn't for Charlie LaDawn, I would have sent him my papers and I wasn't oh, coming back. Gosh. Long Island was so, so sweet and the breeze was so good. You seem to have been having a good time down there. What's <laughs> and, coming up in school? And yes, what's coming up in school? Once we've got to show you much more from Long Island all through the week. And we've got to break down how the sailing went down. That and more ahead in sports. Good morning once again. It's a Tuesday. Don't get it confused with Monday. Long Island was the place to be this weekend as the 52nd. Regatta was held in Salt Pond and despite most of the races having to be put off due to the lack of wins, they were able to crown the champions running tied in Class A, New Susan Chase in Class B, and Zenith, the National Family Island Champs, did it again in Class C, ending the reign of the Witty K. 
Commodore Chester Fox had to make some tough decisions. Even though um, we had our challenges, I still think everything turned out pretty good. Well, you know, it ain't never going to turn out perfect because no matter what you do, there's always going to be somebody who's going to go away unhappy feeling that they didn't get justice. But that's just, that's just sailing in general, you know. You can't please everybody no matter what you do. It's very competitive. And, uh, and we get to the point now in, in sloop sailing in this country, for sure, on, ever, on any given day, you got four or five boats in any one of those classes that could win a race, probably even more. You know, so if you're not on your game, you're going to get beat. That's just, a, that's just the way it is. The crowds attending was one of the best in quite some time as persons flocked from all over to witness top sailing and also enjoy the food and onshore activities. For those that were not there, the best station in the Bahamas provided daily coverage. Long Island Sailing Association President Gina Burroughs Coakley was smiling all over. We had a few hiccups and our beautiful Long Island breeze really wasn't working with us this year. But other than that, everything went perfect. We had quite a crowd. We had quite a crowd. I think probably the biggest crowd in a while. And guess what? We even had Zemness and fantastic coverage. Thank you very much. Member of Parliament for Long Island, Adrian Gibson, sending special thank yous to all that made the 52nd Long Island Regatta a success. I want to extend special thanks to the Long Islanders Association, led by Gino and Keith and Tanya. They are some of the most hard-working persons in the Bahamas and also the Long Islanders or the Long Island Sailing Club for doing a yeoman's task in producing a well-organized, spectacular regatta year after year. Your efforts and commitment is noble and it denotes an undying love and dedication to your island. Regatta 52 has been a resounding success. Most of you have come back to Long Island year over year. Some of you have returned to Long Island this year for the first time. Welcome back to the sailors. I thank you for coming. Congratulations to all of the sailors, especially the sailors from Long Island. For minor league baseball, Lucius Fox and Montgomery Biscuits taking three of the four games so far in their series with Anthony Seymour and the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Sunday they won 9-4. Lucius won for three scored three runs. Seymour was 0 for 4. And also for minor league baseball, Chavez Young 1 for 5 in the Dunedin Blue Jays 13-7 loss to Bradenton. And that's going to do it for Sports Tuesday. I'm Charles Fisher. Once again, special thank you for those in Long Island that made our trip a success. In our final look at weather, mostly cloudy skies outside of our studios, temperature at 79 degrees, relative humidity 88%. The winds out of the north at 2 miles per hour, the barometric pressure 1,017.0 millibars. That's 30.04 inches and it is steady. Temperatures around the Isles this morning, 80 degrees in Marsh, Harbabico, Green, Tolkien and Freeport. In the Berry Islands, 82 degrees, 81 in Alistair and Bimini. As we take you to Harbour Island, 81 there. Rock Sound, Elutra, 81, 79 degrees in Otterstown, Cat Island. Staniel Key, Kemp Space on Andros, Fresh Creek in Central Andros, all at 81 degrees. In San Salvador, 79, 79 also in Rum Key. In uh, Ragged Island, Clarence Town, Long Island, Crooked Island, 80 degrees, Betsy Bay, Benguana, 81, 81 in Acklands, Matthew Town, Inagua, and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Your boating forecast for today, light and variable winds in the northwest and central islands. So wave fights, they're going to be around 1 to 3 feet over the ocean. However, those winds are going to be gusting up to about 25, 30 knots near showers and thunderstorms with higher seas as well. Low tide takes place at 835 this morning, high tide at 253 in the afternoon. For the southeast Bahamas, a southeast flow at 10 to 15 knots and the wave fights 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the tropics, the tropics remain quiet this morning. Still have that strong upper level. Our sharing taking place, keeping a lid on development. And our satellite picture showing a mid to upper level our trough over the central Bahamas. That is moving now westward across the northwest Bahamas. That too will fire up some showers and thunderstorms during the course of the day, some of which will be heavy at times. 
Uh, our forecast uh, for today calls for cloudy intervals with showers and thunderstorms. As we already tell you, they will be heavy at times, 87 degrees for your high temperature. And tonight, the low temperature getting down to 78 degrees under partly cloudy skies, one or two showers remaining in the mix. And your extended weather forecast over the next uh, seven days, showers continuing off and on into Wednesday, Thursday. Dries out just a bit, those probability drop down to about 30%. That will carry into Friday before picking back up to about 80% on Saturday. Ladon? Thanks a lot, Basil. And if you had an appointment at the Flamingo Gardens Clinic recently, well, today, listen up. The Ministry of Health in a statement notes that due to unexpected circumstances, all services at the Flamingo Gardens Clinic is temporarily suspended from today, June 11th. That's a wrap for us. Make sure to join us tomorrow when the Minister of Health appears live right here on the Morning Edition. Once again, I'm LaDawn Davis. Have a great day, everyone.